Democracy That Delivers is brought to you by the Center for International Private Enterprise. And now, to your host, Ken Jakes. Hi, I'm Anna Kampanek. I'm the Director of Global Programs at SAIP, and I am the guest host of Democracy That Delivers this week. I am broadcasting remotely from Amman, Jordan. Uh, Ken will return next week. I have here in the studio Karim Shaban. Uh, Karim is SAIP Program Director in Jordan. Karim, welcome to the program. Thank you, Anna. All right. So uh, just to get us started, can you tell the listeners a little bit more about yourself? How long have you been with SAIP? Uh, what did you do before? Sure. Um, I've been with SAIP now for um, a little bit over a year. Before SAIP, I, um, I was in Yemen uh, working with um, the uh, USAID Office of uh, Transition Initiatives, helping uh, Yemen's um, uh, transition um, post the revolution there. Um, I've overall I have about um, ten years experience in managing and implementing uh, development programming in the Middle East and North Africa region, um, mostly for USAID funded projects. Excellent. Um, well, let me add to that uh, a brief explanation of what I am doing here in Amman, given that. Uh, I am based in, in Washington, D.C. at SAIP headquarters. Um, we just spent the last uh, two days at a very interesting workshop uh, focused on using technology tools for advancing business advocacy uh, with the help of um, our wonderful um, colleague and consultant Alexandra Tyers from Panoply Digital uh, in London. Uh, Alexandra uh, shared her expertise with um, representatives of 12 local business associations and some of their uh, member businesses. Um, we talked about a wide variety of uh, tools and techniques that uh, business associations can use to better uh, reach their members, uh, to um, be able to uh, conduct their operations more securely, uh, to use um, innovative uh, techniques such as um, um, various apps and tools uh, that are available on the internet or through mobile devices that as it turns out, some of them were familiar, but many of them were new and, and interesting, I think, to everybody in the room. We had right. um, an interactive, engaging, and uh, I think, I would hope, very useful session, uh, which um, fits very well into the larger effort that SAIP uh, is working on here in Jordan that has to do with capacity building uh, of these local business associations. Can you tell us a little bit more about the program? Absolutely. Uh, this uh, program is um, funded by the USAID uh, Jordan Local Enterprise Support Project. The USAID uh, Local uh, Enterprise Support Project is implemented by FHI 360 and is designed to encourage the long-term uh, economic growth and development potential of underserved communities. Uh, the LENS project uh, helps empower local communities to design and implement collaborative uh, local economic development initiatives and supports the vitality and competitiveness of micro and small enterprises uh, in Jordan. The LENS project works specifically in the governments, governorates of Erbid, Zarqa, Amman, Tafila, Aqaba and Karak and it so also that's, that's covering pretty much the whole country, or, or which sections, so geographically speaking, of the country, north, south, center, can you give us an idea? <laughs> exactly, it covers, it covers the north, the center, and the south, and the, um, the major population centers, mm -hmm. um, and the, mostly uh, most assistance or most uh, business support organizations, including business associations, are uh, center their activities in Amman, in the capital. Um, and um, the uh, population um, centers outside of Amman are, are usually neglected and, um, and are underserved by business support organizations and, and programs, development programs in general. So that's why the LENS project puts a, a focus on engaging uh, micro and small enterprises 
and the support organizations that provide services to them outside of the capital. It includes um, uh, a focus on empowering business support organizations, as I mentioned, um, in Amman to reach out to the governorates to help micro and small enterprises um, and also um, for the ones that do exist outside of the capital. And this is where SIPE comes in. Um, SIPE has extensive experience in the areas um, of, enable, of creating an enabling environment for private enterprises through working to enhance the enterprise ecosystems and, and business advocacy. Um, and therefore, SIPE and LENS created this partnership under the LENS project uh, for SIPE to work with 12 business associations uh, to strengthen their organizational capacity to ensure that they are sustainable, first of all, and that they provide quality business support services to their members, specifically micro and small enterprises. Mm -hmm. Well, can you tell us a little bit more how, where did you find the associations? Uh, first of all, since you said that some of them are from outside of Amman, how did you choose them? And maybe you can tell us a little bit more about, maybe not all 12, uh, we don't have enough uh, time, I'm afraid, but tell us a little bit about some of the associations. What do they do? Um, sure. How many members they have? Um, well, at the, at, at the launch of the project, um, we conducted an assessment of about 42 business support organizations uh, across Jordan. And we found that the uh, capable business associations that do exist are mostly in Amman, uh, which is um, an issue and, and because they don't have reach outside of the capital. Amman is really the economic uh, center of, of Jordan by far, right? The largest city. The largest, mm -hmm. yes. And uh, including as well Erbid and, and Aqaba. But Amman by far is the where everything is, is centered, uh, pretty much. Um, so uh, th there were several criteria that, that um, we took into account while um, conducting this assessment and choosing the partners that will participate in this program. Um, some of them included the, the sectors, um, if, if they're aligned with the sectors that LENS focuses on, um, as well as um, if they include micro and small enterprises in their membership. Um, and if they are interested in, if they don't include micro and small enterprises, if they're interested in recruiting micro and small enterprises to be part of their membership, and also if, they're, if they do have activities outside of the capital, Amen, um, or if they're interested in expanding their services to reach um, uh, micro and small enterprises outside of the capital. So what are some of the sectors uh, that um, LENS project is focusing on? Uh, some of the sectors include uh, the tourism sector, uh, uh, food sector, specifically food processing, uh, logistics, um, as well as uh, organizations, business associations that focus on engaging women, um, women uh, who lead micro and small enterprises who are, or who are entrepreneurs and are interested in creating their own micro and small enterprises. Yes, yeah, so t tell us more about some of those. Um, since you mentioned the women's organization, maybe we can start with, with that. I was very privileged to, to meet uh, several very impressive uh, women uh, who uh, attended our uh, two-day workshop, Tech, uh, Tech Tools for Democracy workshop. Um, I was very impressed with, with them. Uh, if you can tell us more about the organization itself. Sure. Um, we are working with three business associations who are uh, focused on empowering uh, women um, in various forms, women professionals and women entrepreneurs and owners of micro and small enterprises. Um, of those are, um, is the Business and Professional Women Association of Amman, PBWA, the Jordan Forum for Business and Professional Women, and um, uh, women access to entrepreneurship and development, um, why that? Um, why that, uh, let me start with why that. Why that is an economic development civil society organization. It's not a, uh, it's not a membership based business association. Um, uh, one of the challenges that why that faces is that it is, um, financially not sustainable because it tends to rely on grants, uh, whether uh, uh, 
uh, grants uh, by the through the government or through international um, uh, uh, non-governmental organizations. That, that is a common issue that SIP is facing uh, in working with organizations around the world and part of uh, our value added is helping them think beyond that and, and become more sustainable by focusing on, on, on members and what uh, services and value can they can deliver. Exactly. And so we are working with Waidat to help them transform into a membership-based uh, business association whereby they have members and they provide sustainable services and they um, re have a diverse um, portfolio of, of revenue streams uh, from training and from the services and sponsorships and so on and they're not reliant only on grants. Um, uh, so we've, uh, with Waidat, we help them develop the strategic plan, uh, we've helped them launch uh, their, uh, their uh, new uh, organizational structure and um, and we were successful in in helping them um, recruit members and and now we're working with them on developing the services and the membership schemes and so on uh, that that will be implemented under this new structure um, for the the Jordan Forum for Business and Professional Women, uh, it's, it spans across multi-sectors. It includes professionals and it also includes entrepreneurs and, and including micro and small enterprise um, owners. Um, and we are working with them on, um, again, their strategic direction and, and also diversifying their, their revenue streams, their governance structures. It's, uh, we have uh, several key uh, pillars um, that, that we focus on with the organizations, uh, with our partner organizations, and they include strategic planning, organizational and financial sustainability, um, as well as governance, um, advocacy, and looking at their um, membership services and, and helping them with designing sustainable um, and, value, and valuable membership services uh, for their members, as well as their strategic communications. And uh, you work with your associations on those issues through a variety of approaches, uh, is that correct? So you have uh, training workshops, but sort of one-on-one -on -one technical assistance uh, as needed as well, right? Uh, yes, uh, the support provided by SAIP takes the form of uh, training and technical assistance. Uh, we have, um, we engage local and international experts in the program, including experts that are part of the faculty of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce Institute of I know that, Management. Uh, Bob Harris uh, has been um, visiting and participating. He's one of the, the faculty members. Yes, Bob Harris and, and uh, Bill Paolusi mm -hmm. were very lucky to have them engaged in the program. They add uh, tremendous value to the work that we do. All right, well, let's talk about maybe another example or two of interesting um, associations that are uh, a part of the, the group of 12. Um, the one that I found fascinating was the, the newest member, the Mountaineering Association. Can you tell us more about uh, them and how they uh, came to be um, affiliated with the LENS program? Sure. Well, the uh, Jordan Mountaineering Association is under establishment and we are helping them uh, to, to organize themselves and create a strategic plan and develop their membership services. They're in the, um, they include guides and tour operators in the um, adventure tourism sector. Um, it's a, a sector that has been the, uh, the is uh, mostly informal, it's not a very formal sector, it's not formally organized, and there's a need the, um, for, um, for an entity to, to uh, help organize the sector as well as um, protect uh, the various stakeholders' interests and, and so on. Uh, so the Jordan Mountaineering Association was an idea that came up uh, almost 10 years ago. Um, but has not been able to uh, come to fr full fruition. Um, it's, um, tourism is a sector that is important to LENS as part of the, uh, as a result of the assessment that they did at the start of their project. And um, um, SAIP uh, and the Jordan Mountaineering Association um, entered into partnership um, under the LENS project and, and SAIP was able to help the Jordan Mountaineering Association um, hold its first elections 
and elect its first board. And now we're working with it, with the board of directors to create the uh, uh, GMA's uh, strategic plan, um, devise its governance structure and policies, as well as um, its membership schemes and, and services and, and so on. It's a very promising organization, uh, association in a, in a very promising sector, and, and we're very happy to, to have them as partners. Yes, so you mentioned a very interesting and I think also important uh, element of the role of associations in this particular case. Mm -hmm. um, it's really part of it is self-regulation, right? So instead of you know, waiting for the government to issue some very specific uh, regulations uh, on you know, how outdoor adventure tourism should be conducted, it's much more productive uh, and, and, and healthier uh, usually to have um, businesses who are working in that particular industry agree on what are best practices so that tourism in often fragile environments is sustainable so that it's not uh, attractions done become overcrowded and damaged and also at the same time so that you uh, as a business can provide adequate uh, safety for uh, for the guests who come to visit. So I think that's that's also that's a very interesting and very important aspect of that particular association. Um, and I, f I found it also very interesting. Um, so I'm, I'm not particularly into uh, engaged in outdoor sort of adventure type tourism myself, although perhaps uh, I'll change my mind. <laughs> uh, but it's it's interesting um, because when I think about Jordan, tourist attractions that come to mind are, you know, Petra, Aqaba. Right. Uh, you don't necessarily, your typical person would not necessarily think about, you know, hiking. Uh, or, so it's, it, it seems like a new, um, maybe still, as you mentioned, underdeveloped uh, sector that um, the timing of focusing on it would probably be, it's very opportune given that tourism overall has been down not just in, in Jordan but in, in the, the whole yeah. region due to issues that we won't get into <laughs> in this podcast that would be a much longer conversation but it, it is a needed um, initiative to, to try to bring back more uh, visitors to Jordan right yeah absolutely it's a it's a very promising sector and one of the main supporters uh, behind the establishment of this organization is the Jordan Tourism Board mm -hmm. um, the Jordan Tourism Board would would um, is very interested in, in organizing the sector, regulating it, and, and making sure that best practices are um, developed and adhered to. Um, but yeah, with the help of, of civil society organizations like the Jordan Mountaineering Association, this can be possible. And you know, business associations, uh, uh, the usually the membership is is much closer to the ground and the grassroots and. Um, the, the the added value to the sector is is just tremendous. Um, once the the association is up and running, um, and like I said, it includes tour operators, independent, formal and informal guides, as well as um, other other stakeholders who are uh, involved in the adventure tourism sector. Um, I uh, I'm I'm very much looking forward to. Uh, uh, to working with them and to uh, also partaking in some adventure tourism <laughs> <too>. at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Um, is there another organization that uh, you'd want to uh, profile? Um, sure. We are also working with the Jordan Exporters Association, uh, another association that uh, spans across uh, multiple sectors. The Jordan, uh, our work with the Jordan Exporters Association uh, because they do have um, um, very high capacity in the areas, in some of the areas that, that we talked about, strategic planning, governance, and so on. So we are focusing with them uh, specifically on designing um, a, a, an export support unit for micro and small enterprises. So this unit will uh, basically uh, help micro and small enterprises who are members of the association um, and also non-members for a higher price um, to become export ready and to um, increase their sales and, 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 and growth. Um, so this is something that we're uh, very excited about and uh, as well as Lens and the Jordan Exporters Association as well. What are some of the, the types of goods that uh, those micro enterprises would be exporting? 
um, handicrafts, um, soaps, uh, uh, food, uh, various uh, types of food. Um, and uh, so th this is basically the three areas uh, at the moment, uh, but also includes uh, garments and textiles and things like that. Um, but it's, uh, the unit has not been officially launched yet. Um, so it depends also on the, on the members who are, uh, would be interested in, in, um, in receiving this kind of support so they can become, so they can export and use different e-commerce uh, models and so on um, to, to increase their sales um, and growth without a lot of uh, capital investment. That's the key because micro and small enterprise is one of the main issues that they face is access to finance and, and a lack of capital and so on. Right. All right. Um, well, we talked about sort of the big idea. We talked about the how. We talked about sort of the, the capacity building uh, activities. Let's talk about the impact a little bit. And of course, um, it is multifaceted because by the very design, uh, we're talking about the multiplier effect. So we're strengthening the capacity of associations to help many, many, many businesses as a result. Right. Uh, so can you can you talk about uh, both, I guess? So I know that we have some measurable outcomes at the association level. I believe, for instance, the Professional Business Women's Association was able to secure significant sponsorships thanks to um, our um, technical assistance to them. Um, but also let's talk about the bigger picture. How many businesses throughout, small businesses, micro, small enterprises, are we touching throughout Jordan through, through that project? I know that, I know you track that number. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, as, as you mentioned, Anna, we are working on two tracks. We are um, uh, helping to strengthen the capacity and enhance the capacity of our partners. Um, and uh, in order for them to provide better services or enhance services to their uh, micro and small enterprise members. Um, overall, um, w through uh, SIPE's um, support uh, to the business associations and through our training and technical assistance, we were able to reach, uh, we were able, first of all, to conduct over 9,000 hours of training over the past year and we provided uh, our partners micro and small enterprises with over 900 opportunities for uh, capacity building and training. Uh, we also helped our um, uh, partners and their member MSCs create 57 business linkages so far whereby they've entered into um, uh, partnerships with other entities, whether they're, there's business other business support organizations or other businesses uh, for mutual benefit. And um, in terms of the, the capacity building or the progress that we've been able to achieve so far with our partner business associations, we've helped seven out of the 12 um, uh, partners that we're working with so far to increase their their revenues to di to increase their revenues and for and to also diversify uh, their revenue streams and we've helped ten out of the twelve associations uh, that we're working with to increase their membership uh, attract more members specifically micro and small enterprises. Impressive numbers, if I may uh, say so myself. It's been a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, great. Well, let's uh, let's look into the future then. Uh, sort of going forward, what uh, what are the plans for the program? Um, I know, for instance, that another component is uh, advocacy training. We, we can talk about that a little bit. Sure. Um, well, um, it's uh, the the program. It's um, uh, it's built in stages. So the first stage before going into the future. Uh, the first stage was capacity building in the areas uh, that, that we talked about before, governance, strategic planning, organizational um, uh, and financial sustainability, as well as uh, membership services and strategic communications, um, include, and in addition to that advocacy. Moving forward, we are focusing on two areas. Uh, we are continuing to build the capacity of our business association partners um, and but the, in the next stage, it's going to take a different form. It's going to be done um, through strategic initiatives, through supporting them to implement uh, the, the tactics and 
and ideas that they've been trained on in the first phase of the program. Um, and in addition to that, um, we're also going to be introducing, or not introducing because we've covered this before, but also going into more depth in terms of um, the support that we're providing to our partners in the area of advocacy um, and helping them to develop their policy agendas and positions and, and, um, and working with them specifically on um, building coalitions and, and, uh, and, and implementing advocacy activities and campaigns. We're going to choose three partners um, out of the 12 who are interested in implementing advocacy campaigns and we're going to be working with them on um, implementing the things that we have trained them uh, on and provided them technical assistance with um, and thereby implementing, actually implementing advocacy campaigns with, with uh, those three who are chosen and interested at the end. And I would also mention that here we have a, an interesting synergy between uh, this project and another site project uh, happening in Jordan, our work with the Al Quds uh, Center. Um, where Al Quds will provide, if I understand correctly, mentorship on advocate and sort of assistance on advocacy issues to those associations. Is that right? Yes. Um, SIP has been uh, has been working with Al Quds for a number of years now under uh, different programs uh, funded by uh, mostly by the National Endowment for Democracy. Um, and um, have a lot of experience in areas of advocacy. Uh, we have a different program with Al Quds to um, help a, a group of uh, employers' unions um, create a federation uh, to, to maximize their, uh, the, their, the voice of their members and their advocacy efforts. Uh, so Al Quds has a lot of experience in this area and, and we look forward to working with them um, uh, on, on helping our partners under the Lens Project to uh, design and implement effective advocacy campaigns. And I should mention to our listeners, uh, if you would like to know more about um, Al Quds Center and the work that we have been um, doing together, um, a few months ago, uh, I had the pleasure of conducting uh, another, a similar podcast uh, interview with um, Executive Director of Al Quds, uh, Mr. Oreb Al Rantawi. So I, I would encourage everybody who would like to uh, know more about uh, their work and initiatives in Jordan to uh, look back and, and uh, find that podcast. Um, all right, uh, we're almost out of time. Any, any closing thoughts, any parting uh, messages? Sure. I just want um, I want to highlight uh, two two important things. One of them is that the the twelve partners uh, taking part in a, in a program really span across multiple sectors, and and it adds to the richness of the program. Uh, when we have group trainings and, and opportunities for experience sharing, it's um, it's uh, it's something that we are uh, really excited about. We have um, several uh, partners who are in the. Um, environment and green technology sector. Uh, we cover the manufacturing sector with three partners. We have, um, like I mentioned, we're working with uh, a couple of partners that are also, um, their members span across multiple sectors like the Jordan Exporters Association and the, the three associations who have um, a women focus. Um, and we uh, are also working in the logistics sector, the tourism sector and the food um, and the food sector, the uh, overall it, it, the overall impact um, so far of the project has been um, has been great um, in terms of helping our partners to attract sponsorships. As you mentioned, the uh, PBWA Business and Professional Women Association was able to attract um, significant uh, sponsorship as a result of. The, the technical assistance that we provided to PBWA in helping them to develop their strategic plan and sponsorship package, um, as well as others who were able to improve their governance structures, engage more uh, young people and, and really focus on, on leadership development uh, amongst their membership and, and engage more women as well um, in, in the leadership positions and, and governance role of their organizations. Um, so the work continues. We are uh, very excited about the partnerships that we've created and, and we look forward to, um, to achieving more impact. 
Thank you, and uh, I definitely look forward to hearing more as, as the program develops and we have even more successes to report. Um, Karim, thank you for your time. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. You've been listening to Democracy That Delivers. For more information about the Center for International Private Enterprise, please go to our website at cipe.org. That's C-I-P-E dot org. Thanks for listening.